Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. Here I am uh, in Dublin, um, opposite uh, St. Catherine's Church. So um, uh, this is uh, an Anglican church. So many Protestant churches, as in Church of Ireland is one of them, here in the city with quite a small Protestant population. Um, so what's significant about this church is not really what happened inside, what happened just outside in the middle of the road where um, uh, Robert Emmett was executed on the 20th of September. Um, 1803. So um, Robert Emmett came from um, an upper middle class uh, Protestant family. Uh, his father was a was a barrister. Um, Robert Emmett was one of several children. Um, his brother Thomas Am Addis Emmett um, moved to the United States, um, was Attorney General of New York, and indeed Robert Emmett's um, uh, uh, grand nephew, also called Thomas Ad Addis Emmett, was a very distinguished surgeon there. Founded a hospital yeah. interred at Glasnevin. His last request was to be buried back here in Hibernia. But anyway, back to to Robert Emmett. So um, uh, he was uh, 25 when he died, and he, I can't remember which school he'd been to. I think it was that one on Grafton Street, which no longer exists. I can't remember the academy. It's where like. Um, Thomas Moore went, the Duke of Wellington, Richard Brinsley, Sheridan, a few others. Um, and then he went to Trinity College Dublin, of course, the only university in Ireland at the time. So although he was very privileged, uh, he felt a great deal of empathy for the underprivileged, for the Catholic majority, who were discriminated against by law at the time. And um, so um, he believed there ought to be no sectarianism, no discriminatory laws, um, and he was against monarchy, aristocracy, and so on. So he was an egalitarian. He was really... Um, filled with the spirit of the French Revolution and wanted to bring that uh, home to Ireland. I'm not sure why he didn't participate in the 1798 United Irishman um, uh, Rebellion. Um, anyway, so uh, that had failed. There'd been um, some fighting um, in the Wicklow Mountains led by Michael O'Dwyer. And then uh, for a few years, um, O'Dwyer quite successfully held off the Crown Forces with the guerrilla campaign. He was offered a pardon if he uh, surrendered, and indeed he did. I'm not sure how they negotiated with him. And I think he went into exile then, but the, 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 the government did honor that. He was not punished in any way, because he was a bit of a thorn in their side. Remember, the Napoleonic Wars were raging. Briefly, there was peace, 1801 to 1802, but uh, neither the French nor the British were really committed to that, both preparing for, for, for the war to continue, using it as a sort of half-time moving troops into position, both accusing each other of breaching this. But uh, anyway, 1798 uh, had failed despite um, French assistance. Admittedly, Lazar Osh arrived a bit too late, as partly because, you know, you couldn't precisely time the movements of ships because it depends on the tides and the winds. Moreover, the United Irishmen's rebellion went off prematurely because they're penetrated by government agents and they simply had to start the rebellion before they all got swept up. But anyway, so Robert Emmett was planning a new rebellion and he had some um, underground uh, weapons factory. Um, but there was a, an explosion in that and he thought, well, this is a, has really blown our cover. We're going to have to prepone our plans. So it went off half-cocked. It was a sort of squalid street brawl outside um, Dublin Castle and Lord Kilwood was dragged out of his um, coach and um, done to death, as was his nephew. And so um, there was a fire of musketry. Not very much went on, but uh, Robert Emmett was quickly um, uh, arrested. Um, he'd managed to go into hiding for some time, but uh, he, was, um, he was trying to see his girlfriend, Sarah Curran, who was the daughter of a very distinguished barrister from Cork, John Philpot Curran, who does, does a video um, of his own. Um, but that John Philpot Curran, he's the one who talked about, you know, our need for unsleeping vigilance, a very famous um, quotation. Uh, he was a very witty raconteur. Um, but anyway, um, they also arrested um, Sarah Curran's uh, maid and Devlin, who's from here, from the, from the liberties of Dublin, and a lot of other relatives being brought in there. Allegedly, people were tortured. Wouldn't surprise me. It was 1803 to try and reveal the whereabouts of uh, co-conspirators. But um, anyway, uh, and um, and Devlin wouldn't divulge anything. Well, Robert Emmett even pleaded with her to just say what she knew. Um, he was already damned, and it, just to spare herself the suffering. She was eventually released and lived on quite a great age in the liberties of Dublin. This area is known as the liberties. Um, an area is a liberty if it has some sort of autonomy. I'm not quite sure how the laws were here, but a bit different from the rest of, of Dublin, because this really was within the city of Dublin from the Middle Ages, because down there is, there was a St. James's Gate. The gate was torn down in the late 18th century. The St. James's Gate Brewery, as in Guinness Brewery, uh, still bears that name. Um, 
Anyway, so Emmett was charged with um, high treason and uh, he gave a, a, a magnificently uh, sonorous and eloquent uh, speech from the dock uh, was written down. The trouble is a lot of that is apparently falsified that he wasn't uh, um, quite so uh, articulate or cogent at the time and it was extensively rewritten after his death. But anyway, um, it was decided that uh, he would be punished with death but in the worst possible manner, which is hanging, drawing and quartering. Now, ordinary hanging was horrific back then. It was the, it was the um, short drop, as they would strangle to anything up to half an hour to expire. And as a mercy, they sometimes would be plied with alcohol, so they would go to their doom stocious. But, um, so, hanging, drawing and quartering was rather worse. Now, I'm not sure they could give him the works, as in, um, dragged backwards, since your crime was retrograde to nature, through the streets, sometimes on some sort of cowhide, they don't want you to be so badly injured that you die, so that's agonising. Then, um, uh, the, the, sorry, I think the, the, the hanged first, the lightly hanged there for a minute or so, not to kill you, just to cause you enormous distress. Um, and then dragged, and then quartered, as in having your limbs chopped off one by one, your entrails, and then you can see that you're still not dead yet, your heart and lungs are going, sometimes your privities, and finally decapitated, and the head stuck on the spike. So that that's ha happened to him, and he said, um, do not let my epitaph be written until until um, Ireland takes her place amongst the nations of the world. Um, so um, uh, that was the uh, end of him. Now, um, so he uh, came to meet his death um, fearlessly, although he didn't actually um, uh, deliver an oration from the uh, gallows. So right in the middle of the street to maximise publicity, so thousands of people could see supposedly justice being done. Um, but uh, what, what else? Um, and, and also people would know that he had been killed. Just so no rumour got around, oh, he survived, or he's still in prison, or something like that, or is someone else who got executed in this place. No, it was definitely him. So that was the end of him. And um, the, the, the authorities decided not to hand over his remains to the family, or the bits and pieces. I'm not sure they stuck them on spikes anymore. They had done that in previous centuries as a warning to others. This is what you get if you uh, try a rebellion. So um, there, therefore he has no known grave, so an epitaph of his cannot be written. There's songs about him, Bold Robert Emmett, yeah? Say, I shall die with a smile. Uh, hark the bells tolling, I well know its meaning. Soon I shall show them no coward am I. So it's true that he validly met his death. Now, it's difficult not to admire him. Would it be better if we didn't have sectarianism? Yes. Um, and no discrimination? Yes, that would be a step forward. He believed in all mention of the rights to vote. He did not believe that women should have the right to vote. That was too radical even for him in 1803. He was a man of his time. Um, so, uh, anything else to say about Emmett? Yeah, that, that is him, a very uh, prominent and um, important figure, a uh, very gifted and moral person. I mean, even though I'm a royalist, I think, yeah, he was right on some things. I mean, in the 21st century, would, people would almost universally agree with that. Do you want to break up the Union? No. Always want to split us away from Great Britain. We could have the Union, but no sectarianism. That would be good. But he said, for one, one to go, the other has to go. He obviously had mostly English ancestry, but that didn't mean that he wanted Ireland to be united with, um, with uh, Great Britain. Um, and he did not speak the Irish language at all, spoke English. So that's just a little bit about uh, Robert Emmett. So thank you so much for your donations. Please keep them coming. I um, am in dire need of them in order to keep this channel going. So you can find me on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Callahan, C-A-L-L-A-G-H-A-N. It's all small letters. Right. Toodaloo.